project management of a building from design to completion, the redevelopment of industrial sites into residential areas, and management of an organization's building stock. The master track management in the built environment, also known as MBE, tackles challenges just like these. Preparing graduates for a diversity of jobs in the sustainable development of our urban environment. What does it mean to be a part of the program? Who's it for? And where will you work? Let's get some answers from the people involved. Starting with Master Coordinator, Fred Hobmer. Can you tell us something about the program, Fred? Of course. Management in the built environment deals with development and management of individual buildings, real estate portfolios, and urban area projects. Students will learn how to guide the many stakeholders so that high quality can be achieved and rewarding results. There are many programs worldwide that deal with project management and real estate, but our program sets itself apart because it's based in design. All of our students have a design background that enables them to create multidisciplinary design-based solutions for the challenges we present them in our courses and projects. This is why most of the courses the students will work on a real life case. This makes our program realistic. Thank you for that introduction, Fred. It's clear that it's a broad field that addresses a variety of scales. Are there any challenges you focus on specifically? One of the challenges is the housing shortage. Cities in many countries will have to build lots of houses in the coming years. At the same time, urban sprawl needs to be prevented. As you may know, the Netherlands has a great tradition of compact cities. We can learn from that. Not all countries manage to keep their cities compact. You will discuss with your fellow students how a process can be organized that leads to high quality urban development. But it also needs to be feasible from a societal, financial and sustainable viewpoint. Another challenge is the reuse of vacant buildings. What is needed from the viewpoint of feasibility to give a new use to an existing building? And a last challenge I would like to mention is how classic building project management can benefit from emerging technological innovations like industrialization and ICT. Each of these challenges require that students are knowledgeable about buildings and their designs. Thank you, Fred. MBE is a full-time, two-year program made up of both group and individual work. Focus is placed on gaining knowledge and developing skills. Students are tested as individuals and groups through a mixture of exams, essays, presentations and deliverables. In the second year, students have the opportunity to shape their own programme through elective courses. Graduation is partly in the form of an internship. This gives students a chance to explore thesis topics of their choice with real data collected during an internship at a company or an organisation. The programme is based on three pillars design and construction management, real estate management, and urban development management. The most important courses reflect this. Right here on campus in Delft, we can see some of these themes in action. For example, at the former Faculty of Chemistry. John Heinz, you're the course coordinator of design and construction management. Can you tell us why we're here? Behind me, you see the yellow chemistry building, which will soon be transformed into 600 houses and a school. This is one of several cases we will study in the course Design and Construction Management. As the title of the course suggests, we look at how to steer a building project through the complex web of clients, design professionals, consultants, contractors, and suppliers to its successful completion. Increasingly, we also study how the operation, maintenance, transformation, or demolition of a building should influence how we build it in the first place. We address societal challenges such as circular economy, and the digitalization of the construction industry. In particular, we will focus on how procurement strategies, such as the traditional design, bid, build, or the more integrated strategies, such as design, build, maintain, finance, operate, can be used to realize different outcomes based on the specific requirements, resources, and skill base of a particular client. This course covers the knowledge and application of project management techniques and strategies, building economics, procurement methods, and general management skills in the context of project initiation, 
architectural design, tendering, and construction. Working in small groups, students will study a wide range of readings on these subjects and create summaries of all of the knowledge they acquire. This knowledge will then be contextualized through a series of case-based exercises in which students using literature and project documents will have to develop management responses to typical situations in the design and construction process. The challenge of today is to produce future-proof buildings in these complex environments. This demands a lot from project managers who will need to juggle with a lot of perspectives and different considerations. The DCM course therefore aims to give you a flavor of this complexity so that you can develop the required knowledge on a broad range of aspects in designing and constructing better built environments for the future. Thanks for your insight, John. Projects that are especially complex are redesign projects. Tong Wang, you are coordinating a course about this. Can you tell us more? Sure. In redesign, the students apply the knowledge they have learned and then redesign a real-life redevelopment project. First, the students need to analyze the project from different perspectives. In particular, the client perspective and the user perspective. For the client, project delivery, procurement, tendering and contracts are essential. For the users, their preferences, market opportunities, the interactions with the suppliers and the relationship between costs and quality are essential. Later, the students will use the lessons they have gathered from those perspectives and from potential event cases to redesign the product and the process of the case to make it even more resilient. That means what could have been done differently in order to get a better result in the project. So they come up with a brief, a choice of a delivery model, a procurement strategy and contracts to be used. This is part group work and part individual work. Thank you, Tong. Redesign certainly also plays a role in areas like this one in Delft. Axel Ersoy, you're the course coordinator of Urban Redevelopment Game. Can you tell us where we are and why we're here? Certainly, we are at a business and industrial area called Ski Overs in the city of Delft. There are dozens of businesses here, like a garage, a do-it-yourself store, but also a concrete factory. This is an area that is planned to be a mixed-use area. The municipality adopted a plan in which around 4,000 houses will be built in this area. At the same time, the businesses shall continue. We can imagine there is a tension between the business side of the area and the future residential side. Redevelopment of such an area involves many management issues. Think of the organization of the plans and designs that need to be produced. Think of the participation process that is needed. Of course, there is a societal aspect as well, such as how the municipality can make sure that not only expensive apartments will be built, but affordable houses too. And to what extent property developers can contribute to the infrastructure that is needed and still make a reasonable profit? And how can all of this be guided by sustainability principles? In course urban and infrastructure redevelopment, the students will work on these issues. They will learn how to assess, analyze, research and improve their project assignments in practice. This is in the form of a game. Students team up in a group, and every group member fulfills a certain role, like the role of a project developer or municipal land development official. The groups will produce a plan and a strategy, including a financial feasibility test and phasing. This course prepares students for professionals like a process manager in the profit or non-profit sectors. Also, it gives them insights into the business of project development. Great, thanks Axel. Let's head back to the Faculty of Architecture and the built environment. Here, students are working for the course Real Estate Management. This is the fourth and final major course of MBE. Real Estate Management of an existing portfolio is central to this course. It's all about the strategic management level of portfolios, an essential skill for graduates. So now we have an idea of what the program entails, but who is it for? Well, management in a built environment is for students who are genuinely interested in processes, involved in the design of buildings 
and urban projects. You must have a keen interest in managerial issues such as organization, quality management, strategy formation, multi-actor decision-making, sustainable and fair development, and feasibility studies. So part of the work is doing reality checks on designs. Management in a built environment is not only inviting for students who want to continue their studies after obtaining a BSc, but also for practicing international architects who recognize that in order to grow, they need management skills and knowledge taught at a top school of architecture and the built environment. Great, Fred. Thank you. Student life is also an important part of the MBE program experience. So let's talk to a student, Casper. What's life like within the track? MBE is a relatively small course with 70 to 75 students every year. And I think that has a number of positives. For one, you get to work together with basically every student at least once throughout the year in small groups and workshops like we are working together right now. You also get to know the teaching staff and professors very well. They know you by, by name, they're very attentive and they are very engaged and interested in you doing well. So here at MBE we also have a very active study association called BOSS that organize study trips, business tours, lunch lectures, getting students in touch with practice and also the occasional drinks, for example, and a lot of other fun activities. That sounds like a lot of fun. But where will you end up after graduation? Graduates of the MBE program may opt for a wide range of roles in the building and project development sectors. These include positions such as design manager, construction manager, process manager, project manager, consultant or project developer. There are also positions available in the nonprofit sector, notably with housing associations. Positions are also available in commercial development, such as housing or office buildings. The vast majority of our students end up in the private sector, but public policy related functions are also available to our graduates. Given the broad profile of our program, graduates also end up even in positions outside the built environment, such as banking. Does this track sound like something for you? You can find out more by attending one of our master events, contacting our study association boss, or visiting our website.